So in this short video, we're going to look uh, at the difference between perfect competition and monopoly. That's two different types of markets. Okay? And these differences arise because of some assumptions. We assume that a market is perfectly competitive when many small firms are producing identical products. So think of something like wheat. We're assuming that consumers don't have any preference for you know, one brand's wheat over another brand's wheat. We'll assume that they want whichever is the cheaper option. The reason there are many firms in perfectly competitive markets is because there are not any barriers to entry. Okay? In other types of markets, like monopoly markets, a barrier to entry that restricts entry of competing firms could be something like a patent. Okay, a patent gives the owner of the patent the legal right to prevent other firms from producing that same uh, product. Okay, so, for example, if I own a patent for Shilladrill, I can prevent other people from manufacturing that drug. So I can be the only one selling that product in the market. And, um, in a perfectly competitive market, we assume that no one firm can impact the price. The idea is that if one firm tries to raise the price, consumers will just go and buy from other firms and another firm will enter to replace the demand of the firm that raised its price. So we assume that other firms can enter very quickly. And so if any firm tries to raise its price above the prevailing market price, they won't sell any. By contrast, a monopoly firm is able to impact the price that prevails in the market through its output decision. We assume that whatever output level decides determines the price through the inverse demand curve in the market. Later, we're going to look at monopolistic competition, which is sort of halfway in between. We'll assume that there aren't any barriers to entry, uh, but rather than the product being unique, there's going to be differentiated products. So one firm's product is a partial substitute for another firm's product, but they're not exactly the same. Uh, and in a later lecture, we'll look at oligopoly markets. Okay, so before I get started, I want to ask you a quick true or false question, which I want you to think about, pause the video, and then proceed. So the question is, firms in perfectly competitive markets maximize their profits. True or false? Okay, so pause the video now. Okay, you're back. Um, so a lot of people make the wrong choice. They think that, they, that the answer is false, that firms are not maximizing their profits. That's not actually true. Firms in perfectly competitive markets are doing the best they can to maximize their profits. It turns out, however, that based on the assumptions that uh, form the, you know, the outcomes in perfect competition, based on those assumptions, the best a firm can do is to earn zero profits but it still comes out of profit maximization. So let's, let's go over that now. Let's see how that works. So let me start by writing down the profit firm. So I'm going to write that the profit for firm J is equal to the price that it is able to charge for its goods as a function of the quantity that it produces. Okay, so the assumption here is that this inverse demand curve uh, may or may not be equal to the inverse demand curve in the market. This is the residual demand facing the firm. So after all the other firms have sold their product, this is sort of the remaining uh, demand curve or inverse demand curve facing this firm. Okay. So we have price as a function of the quantity it produces times the quantity that that firm produces. And this first part here is the revenue. Now, to get the profits, we have to subtract off the cost of producing that quantity of goods. All right, so it's a cost of producing uh, Q, the J subscript, number of units of the good. Okay. I'll just be very clear here that this is the costs. Okay, so we have this function, this profit function, which depends on one variable, the quantity that firm J produces. How do we maximize this firm's profits, or how do we maximize the value of this function? Well, the math tool that we use is we're going to take the derivative of profits and set it equal to zero. And the solution to that is going to give us the output level, the quantity um, that is our uh, candidate solution 
for the quantity that maximizes profits. Of course, you need to check whether that's the quantity that maximizes versus minimizes profits, but again, we, we skip over that part uh, largely in this class. Okay, so let's take the derivative. Okay, so we're going to take the derivative of the profit uh, function with respect to quantity that firm J produces, and that's going to be equal to the derivative of this first part, revenues, minus the derivative of the second part, costs. For calculating the derivative of revenues, we're going to use the product rule. Uh, so the derivative is going to be the derivative of the price with respect to quantity times quantity. And actually, to simplify the notation, I'm going to rewrite the derivative of price with respect to quantity. Okay, It is going to be represented by this P prime of the quantity produced by firm J. So this little prime symbol here is going to indicate that we're that it's the derivative of this pricing function. Okay. Okay, so to finish taking the derivative, we're going to add to this price. If this looks unfamiliar to you, then I suggest that you review the product rule. Okay, so this part here is the derivative of the first part, the derivative of revenues, also known as marginal revenue. And then we're going to subtract from that the derivative of costs which I'm just going to represent by this prime symbol. Prime here denotes that the um, that this is the derivative of the cost function rather than the cost function. Right, so the prime symbol is right here. Okay, And we're going to set this derivative equal to zero. Oh, and I can make this clear that this is marginal cost. Okay, so even without specifying any specific formulas or numbers in this problem, we can see that profit maximization is going to entail setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. Now let's look at the difference between perfectly competitive firm and a monopoly firm. Both firms are maximizing profits. The difference is going to arise because of the assumptions that go into these different types of markets. So let's uh, let's sort of we'll create one side for um, monopoly and one side for perfect competition. So let's start with the monopoly side. It's basically going to look exactly like what we have here. So I can just rewrite that. So we're going to have P prime, the quantity produced, times the quantity produced, plus the price. And if we add the marginal cost to both sides, is equal to C prime QJ. Okay, so we have marginal revenue on the left-hand side is equal to marginal cost. And all of these terms remain in here because the derivative of price with respect to the quantity that this firm produces is negative. It just reflects the derivative of the inverse demand curve, which we know is downward sloping. Now let's look at perfect competition. Okay, so we could start by copying this over. Here's the key difference. The derivative of price with respect to the quantity that firm J sells is zero. Why? Because we assume that firms in a perfectly competitive market are price takers. They cannot impact the market price based on how much they produce, uh, or they can't really impact the market price in any way. So the derivative of price with respect to QJ is equal to zero. And that causes this first term to drop out. And that's where we get for perfectly competitive firms that they set price equal to marginal cost. So they are trying to maximize profits, okay, but they end up setting price equal to marginal cost because they do not have any market power. 
because there are many firms and because there are no barriers to entry. So we can also look at this graphically. The left-hand side depicts a monopoly market and the right-hand side depicts perfect competition. What I want you to notice here is that on the left-hand side, showing the monopoly market, the marginal revenue that the firm faces is downward sloping. It's actually steeper than the inverse demand curve. And the reason is that it reflects two things. As the firm increases its output, yes, it gets more money from selling additional units. But assuming that it charges the same price for all of its units that it sells, in order to sort of make that additional sale, to sell to the next marginal consumer, the firm has to drop its price so that the next marginal consumer is willing to buy. And that drop in price applies to all units. So when they sell an additional unit, yes, they get the revenue from selling that additional unit, but now they're earning less on each of the units that they were already selling or they would have sold otherwise. Okay, so that's why the marginal revenue curve is steeper than the marginal cost curve. Okay. And you can see on this graph that they'll set the quantity where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost, and they'll charge a price equal to the height of the inverse demand curve at that quantity. Okay, so now let's look at the right-hand side, which shows a market under perfect competition. Now, it is assumed that the marginal revenue for any single firm is simply equal to the market price. No matter how many units that they sell, they cannot impact the market price. It is just set at some number. Okay? So when they sell an additional unit, they don't have to lower the price on the units they're already selling. So in perfect competition, firms are also going to set marginal revenue equal to marginal cost. It just happens that marginal revenue and price are the same because of the structure of the market. Okay, so that's, that's the key difference. It's not that firms are not trying to maximize their profits. It's just that the structure of the market prevents them from earning profits, even though they are maximizing their profits given the structure. 